Tell me a little bit about whether Labour, you think, should embrace this apparent crackdown on people who are uh, who are, could work even a little bit, who are disabled or long-term unemployed. Um, this apparently wouldn't would be implemented until 2025. Uh, the government is having this conversation. Should Labour have the same conversation? I think Labour is prepared to have a very much uh, better conversation than this. Uh, I think what Labour wants to do is to look at how we can properly prepare people for work, uh, those on lo long-term illnesses, how we can get them back, how we provide the support for them to ensure that they can come back in deployment. Uh, and part of that, if it means working from home, yes, uh, I, I think we should get as many people for their own quality of life to actually get back into work uh, and, and to move that forward. But it has to be done in a considered uh, and a positive way. And with these sort of threats that the government's making, what are they going to do? Stop people's benefits who are very ill and who have had serious issues? There's lots of people I know uh, that, that have issues of, of long-term illnesses who actually want to go back to work, but they haven't got the support to do that. So I think, first of all... And, and that's, that's the problem, Khaled, isn't it? Yeah. That's the problem, Khaled, isn't it? Because if you say, uh, right, well, you're mentally ill, for example, we want you to get back to work. Well, how long is it going to take for an assessment? How long, are, you know, those people might be waiting on a waiting list? 7.6 million people in this country on a waiting list. Uh, there are so many people who, who perhaps want to get back to work but can't. But there is this problem as well, Khaled, of people abusing the system. And that's what goals people who go out to work, the people who are the backbone of this country, who are just you know, putting in the hours, paying their taxes, doing everything that's asked of them, yet still they're not getting the public services they want, and they look around them and see people who are, you, you know, playing us for fools, really, sometimes. Well, that, those people have got have, have, have no place uh, in those sort of benefits. These benefits were people who deserve the support because of, of the illnesses uh, and the position that they're in. Uh, and I think people who abuse that uh, should be taken to task and should be dealt with. Um, tell me about Birmingham, because the leader of Birmingham City Council, who's a Labour leader, insisted vital services would be protected as the authority has declared itself effectively bankrupt. Isn't this just Labour failure? Well, no, the problem is it's, it's, a, it's a failure of the government to support local government. Birmingham isn't the only local authority. Shouldn't they have to work within the budgets they have, Khaled? Yes, they should, but the problem has been is that equal pay has come on top of that and what we had to do uh, in Birmingham is try to resolve uh, all of these issues. But there's been a bigger cut, over a billion pounds cut, which is money that we're looking for at the moment. Uh, but the, you, the you mentioned, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Birmingham. Sorry to interrupt you. I just want to just want to illuminate the point there, just for people who might not be familiar about this. There was a massive court case a few years ago that said that Birmingham City Council wasn't equally paying people. They've had to pay out a huge amount of money as a result of this. But shouldn't they, they just have paid people equally in the first place? I mean, they've stored up problems for themselves, and this is a Labour-run council. Well, it is, and, and to be honest with you, when it originally happened, uh, as soon as it happened, we had also transitioned to a conservative, conservative Lib Dem and a conservative uh, government as well. In those years, four, four or five years, there was a huge problem stored up uh, and wasn't dealt with. So what we've got now is the failure of those things. But I think what government has done wrong and needs to look at is having district auditors. We used to have district auditors who would give you regular warnings on the health uh, of the local authorities. The government in 2013 decided to do away with them. And so there are no real checks and balances apart from internal audits, uh, which councils have. And you'll find lots of councils across the country, because of austerity, because of the lack of spending they've had, are in similar positions. But obviously, Birmingham suffered this because it is the largest council. Uh, it has made huge cuts uh, over the last 10, 12 years to its, its, in, its employment base. Uh, we're now something like 20% of what, what they were. So I think those issues have to be considered as well. Okay.